Are the rumors about Marie Osmond's daughter true? Today, we're going to find out, covering everything from Marie's early days with her brother Donnie to the newest revelations. Marie Osmond has always been great at changing her career and facing tough times with courage. She's been through a lot, like two divorces and the very sad loss of a child, but she always stays strong. Now we're looking into her choices about her money and how her life's ups and downs have influenced her thoughts on family and wealth. Let's dive into Marie's story and what her daughter has revealed. Marie's Rise to Fame Marie Osmond was born on October 13, 1959, in Ogden, Utah, as Olive Marie Osmond to Olive Davis and George Verrill Osmond. She was the only girl among eight siblings. Growing up in a deeply religious Latter-day Saint family, Marie was surrounded by music from a young age. Her brothers, Alan, Wayne, Merrill, and Jay Osmond, formed the core of the Osmond Brothers a musical group that achieved immense popularity. Over the years, the group's lineup has seen changes, and by 2022, it included only Merrill and Jay. Marie's entry into the entertainment world happened at the tender age of four, making her debut on The Andy Williams Show alongside the Osmond Brothers. Throughout the 1960s, she occasionally performed with her brothers on TV. The 1970s marked Marie's emergence as a solo artist, stepping out from her brother's shadow. Her first solo album in 1973 leaned more towards country than pop, and she continued performing in concerts with her brothers. Her debut single, Paper Roses, was a massive success, becoming a number one hit on the country charts and breaking into the top five on the Billboard pop charts. The single and her debut album both earned gold certification. Following Paper Roses, Marie released In My Little Corner of the World as a single and an album both of which also performed well on the charts. Her third album, Who's Sorry Now, released in 1975, continued her success streak, with its title track making it into the top 40. Additionally, Marie scored pop hits through duets with her brother Donnie, including Morning Side of the Mountain and I'm Leaving It Up to You, both achieving top 10 positions on the pop charts, with the latter also making it into the top 20 country hits from hit duets to The Donnie and Marie Show. The duo of Donnie and Marie Osmond became so beloved for their musical collaborations that in 1975, they embarked on a variety show together. Their combined charm and talent were such a hit that ABC turned their show into a full-fledged TV series. Named Donnie and Marie, the program aired for two years before evolving into the Osmond Family Hour in 1979. In a memorable 1976 appearance, Donnie and Marie visited Sonny and Cher on their popular show, The Sonny and Cher Show, where they stood out in bright red sweaters adorned with their initials, performing a rendition of the Wings' silly love songs. In 1977, Marie released her fourth solo album, This Is The Way That I Feel, marking a significant shift from her previous country-focused music to a more pop-oriented sound. The album featured original songs and tracks written by the Bee Gees, showcasing an attempt to tap into the pop music scene. Despite the involvement of high-profile names, the album didn't achieve commercial success. That same year, Marie ventured into the business world by launching her own cosmetics line, which included skincare products and a personalized fragrance, initially available at Kmart, a retailer that has since closed its doors. Marie Osmond's Solo Ventures in TV and Music Marie Osmond, known for her musical talents, also ventured into television on her own. In 1979, she took a lead role in a sitcom pilot named Marie, though it wasn't picked up for a series. However, NBC saw potential in Marie and in 1980 launched a variety show titled Marie, starring her. Unfortunately, the show was short-lived, ending after just a half season. In her personal life, Marie got engaged to Jeff Clayton, an acting student, in 1980, but the engagement was called off a few months later. Throughout the 1980s, Marie explored her musical career further by changing record labels multiple times and solidifying her place as a country artist. She left RCA Records for Capitol Records, under which she released There's No Stopping Your Heart, 
This album produced two number one singles, including a duet with Dan Seals called Meet Me in Montana. Marie continued to make appearances on TV, co-hosting Ripley's Believe It or Not with Jack Palance and starring in two TV movies, Side by Side, The True Story of the Osmond Family, where she portrayed her mother Olive in the drama I Married Wyatt Earp. In 1986, her album I Only Wanted You included the hit duet You're Still New to Me with Paul Davis, topping charts again. However, her next two albums, All in Love and Step in Stone, did not achieve commercial success, ending the decade on a quieter note for Marie's music career. From 90s hiatus to resurgent stardom, Throughout the 1990s, Marie Osmond stepped back from the music scene, releasing just one notable song in 1995, What Kind of Man Walks on a Woman. That year, she also joined Betty White in the sitcom Maybe This Time. But despite its strong cast, the show was canceled after its first season. Marie found success on Broadway in the mid-90s, starring in productions of The King and I and The Sound of Music. In 1998, she teamed up with her brother Donnie for the Donnie and Marie talk show, which aired for two seasons. Marie turned to writing in the 2000s, publishing her memoir, Behind the Smile, My Journey Out in 2001, followed by two more books. She competed on Dancing with the Stars in 2007, finishing third. Two years later, her brother Donnie won the competition. Starting in 2008, Donnie and Marie headlined a successful variety show at the Flamingo Casino in Las Vegas, which ran for 11 seasons until 2019. Marie released I Can Do This in 2010, an album featuring personal and introspective songs. She continued her music career with Music is Medicine in 2016 and her latest album, Unexpected, in 2021. Marie joined The Talk as a co-host in 2019, but left in 2020 to focus on her family. Marie's Marriages. In 1982, Marie Osmond married Stephen Lyle Craig, a Brigham Young University basketball player. The following year, they welcomed their son, Stephen James Craig. However, their initial romance ended in divorce by 1985. Yet, their story didn't end there. In 1986, Marie married Brian Biosel, and together, they expanded their family with two biological children and five adopted children. This marriage lasted until 2007, ending on friendly terms. In 2010, Marie faced profound tragedy when her son Michael died by suicide. After a long battle with depression and addiction, though no drugs were found in his system at the time of his death. In a heartwarming turn of events, Marie remarried her first love, Stephen Lyle Craig, in 2011, even wearing her original wedding dress for the occasion. They have remained together happily ever since. Marie Osmond takes a different path with her fortune. Here's a surprising detail. Marie Osmond doesn't plan to leave her substantial wealth to her seven children. Instead of following the trend among many wealthy celebrities of passing on large inheritances, Marie has decided against it. Her rationale? She believes handing over large sums of money can deprive them of learning the importance of hard work and self-reliance. Observing the difficulties faced by children from affluent backgrounds and carving out their own paths, Marie aims to avoid these pitfalls. Marie intends to donate her fortune to charity rather than her offspring. Despite facing some backlash from her talk show co-hosts and the public, Marie stands firm in her decision. She views this choice as equipping her children with independence and the ability to persevere, qualities she values more than material wealth. Marie is content knowing her children are pursuing careers they are passionate about, embracing their journey with self-reliance. Marie's support for her daughter amidst personal choices. Marie Osmond's decision not to leave her fortune to her children doesn't reflect a lack of support or care on her part. A perfect example of her unwavering support is how she handled the situation with her daughter, Jessica. Amid widespread speculation, Jessica confirmed rumors about her sexual orientation. Despite the conservative views associated with Marie's faith, she wholeheartedly supported Jessica, showcasing her unconditional love and acceptance. Jessica, who was adopted by Marie and her then-husband Brian at the age of two, has since found joy and fulfillment in marrying her partner, Sarah. This demonstrates that Marie's approach to not leaving her wealth to her children is not about neglect.
Rather, it's about fostering resilience, independence, and the value of hard work in them. Marie stands as a testament to being a supportive parent, celebrating her children's achievements and supporting them through challenges, all while instilling important life values. What do you think about Marie's distinctive stance on inheritance and parenting? Share your thoughts in the comments and remember to subscribe for more updates. Stay tuned for more discussions.